Hello everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show, and welcome back to our Victorian parlor. It's the first Friday in November, which means it's time for the next installment in our 2018 calendar blanket, a Victorian stitch sampler. This month, we're going to learn the very simple and very elegant soaring split shells pattern. Soaring split shells is exactly that. They are simple split shells that soar above each other thanks to a very wide, odd row. This is almost a mindless repeater, so it's very simple and quick to work up, and it would make a lovely throw blanket for the sofa, the couch, a chair, somewhere you wanted a cozy punch of color in a room. It would also make a nice shawl, a very lovely wrap, and an especially pretty scarf. To work the soaring split shells pattern on its own, you can begin with a foundation chain row that's any multiple of five, plus an extra two little chains on the end to start. And you would begin the pattern in the second chain from the hook. And you'll find the pattern notes in the description box down below. If you'd like a copy of this month's stitch guide for soaring split shells, you'll find it for sale in our Etsy shop. And a link to our shop will be in the description box down below as well. You're going to use the same hook and the same kind of yarn you've been using all along. So if you've got that handy, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, scoop up our blankets, and we will stitch up the soaring split shells pattern together. In order to add the next stitch to our 2018 calendar blanket, you need a little bit of yarn for your divider row. I'm sticking with cream for now. And you need about 100 grams of yarn in the color you're going to use for your next stitch. I'm back to green. Both of my yarns are 100% acrylic, medium worsted weight, size 4 yarn. It's the same yarn that I've been using throughout my entire blanket. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. We're still using the 5.5 millimeter hook also known as an I or a 9 in the US, or a size 5 in the UK. You also need your blanket, and once you've got all that together, we can get started. First thing we're going to do is add our divider row. So grab your divider color. I'm still using white. We're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in the top of the last stitch we made in our cobwebs row. So if you're trying to find that, and it looks a little confusing, this would be the last double crochet you worked in the row. And if you left your little tail out, you'd know exactly where that was. I've woven mine in. But remember that your last motif, your double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain five, double crochet, that big webby cobweb, is going to sort of bubble up and stick out. So the last thing you did was work a double crochet into the top of the chain three. So there's a chain three, there's a double crochet. That's the top of the stitch that we're going to join our yarn in. So you can join with a slip stitch. And chain three to start. And this chain three will count as a double crochet. You should have 20 chain five spaces all the way across, 20 chain five, so the big chain five space. You should have 20 of them all the way across your last row. And those are the spaces we're gonna be focusing on here. So not the little ones, not the spaces in between, just the giant chain five spaces. Into that first chain five space, we're going to work five double crochet. So you've got chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and five double crochet worked into that first chain five space. Now, for the rest of this divider row, you're just going to hop way over to the next chain five space, and for each of them, all the way across, you're going to work six double crochet into each of those big chain five spaces. So six double crochet into the big spaces, all the way across, until you get to the last chain five space and I'll hook up with you there. You should have something that looks like this. You have six double crochet in each of those big chain five spaces all the way across. So great big fans. Get all the way to the end. This is the second last chain five space. There's six double crochet worked into it. And just so we know what we're looking at over here, 
Here is the last motif. That's the chain five space. That's the little double crochet, chain two, double crochet. That's the other part of it. And here is the chain, the chain three that began the row. So put your thumb and forefinger on that chain three and you can see your last motif pretty clearly. We're going to work five double crochet into this last big chain three. We're going to hop over top of our little double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and we're going to double crochet once into the top of that chain three. So just so we can all see what's going on here, leaving cobwebs is a, a bit confusing. <laughs> So five double crochet into that last chain five space. So there's five double crochet. Skip over top of that double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Find the chain three that began the row. And you're going to work a double crochet right into the top of that chain three. Count them up, including your chain three at the beginning of your divider row. You should have 120 stitches or 20 really nice big fans running across the top of your blanket. You can fasten off. Take a moment to weave your tail in back and forth and then flip your blanket over and we'll start the stitch. All right, we flipped our blanket. We've got our new stitch color. I'm back to green. We're going to make a slip knot and put it on our hook. Pick up your flipped blanket. So we're looking at the back now of our divider row. You're going to find the last stitch that you made. And you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in the top of that last double crochet we made. So join yarn with a slip stitch. We're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in the same place that we just chained one out of. So single crochet back into the same stitch that you joined in. And here we go. Row one and all odd rows work like this. Chain five. Skip four stitches. Find the fifth and single crochet into it. should have something that looks like this. Single crochet, chain five, skip four, single crochet in the next stitch. So like a little chain five extension bridge. <laughs> chain five. Skip four. Find the fifth stitch and single crochet. Oops. And that's what we've got so far. That's all you have to do for row one in every odd row. So you single crochet, chain five, skip four stitches, find the fifth one, and single crochet into it. So the pattern is single crochet, chain five, skip four, single crochet. Chain five, skip four, single crochet. Chain five, skip four, single crochet. You're going to do that all the way across. You're going to have something that looks like this. So big chain five spaces that kind of pull flat when you hold your blanket properly. And they're all anchored with little single crochets. Every fifth stitch gets a single crochet. Single crochet, chain five, skip four, single crochet. Chain five, skip four, single crochet. Chain five, skip four, single crochet. All the way across. When you get towards the end of your row, you're going to work your last single crochet just before you get to the end. Chain five, and we're going to cheat here. If you were starting this actually from scratch, you would have four stitches to skip, and then you would single crochet into the top of the chain three. But we're just going to cheat it in. So you should have only three stitches left plus your chain three. You're still going to chain five and single crochet into the top of the chain three. We're just cheating it in here for the sake of the blanket. And this is what you should have all the way across. 24 of these big chain five spaces that when laid out flat, sort of sit taunt across the top of your divider row.
So 24 of these spaces all the way across. You're going to chain 3 and turn your blanket. Once you've turned your blanket, you're going to count your chain 3 as a double crochet. It kind of acts as an anchor post for this pattern. And this is what we're going to do into every single one of these chain 5 spaces all the way across. We're going to work a beautiful split shell. The split shell for this pattern is two double crochet worked into that chain 5 space. Chain 2 and two more double crochet worked into the same chain 5 space. So the split shells in this pattern look like this. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. All of that is worked into a chain five space. Jump to the next one and work a split shell. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And that's what we've got so far. And that's what you're going to work all the way across row two and every even row for this pattern. Every five chain space you come across, you work a big split shell into it, which is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Work that all the way across, and I'll catch up with you at the end. And this is what we have so far. We've got 24 split shells running across the top of our blanket, each one of them worked into one of those chain 5 spaces. And again, the chain 5 space is the big guy down here, and a split shell is double crochet, double crochet, chain 2, double crochet, double crochet. And that's what it looks like. You should have 24 of them. You would have worked a split shell into your last chain five space, and you're just going to finish the row with a post. So every row two, every even row, ends with a double crochet in the top of the last stitch, which is a single crochet from the previous row. So it'll look something like that. And just ignore my little short tail there, I haven't woven him in yet. So that's the end of row two and every even row. Chain one, and turn your blanket. Alright, once you've turned your blanket, you should be looking at the back of your split shells. We're going to work that row one, which is the big arcing chain fives, all the way across again. And this is how you work odd rows for each of those odd rows going forward. So you've chained one, you've turned your blanket, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch, that stitch that your chain one is sort of hanging on to. You're going to chain five. Skip over the first split shell, find the space between split shells. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then there's this little sort of ang triangle space in between. Put your hook right through that space and single crochet. You don't have to be tight with your single crochets. In fact, you can treat it a bit like a spike stitch. You're reaching down between those two split shells. You're working a single crochet, and then you chain five more. Jump over to the next triangular space between split shells and work a single crochet right into it. And you see that I've joined my yarn here, I'm working through my stash, so I've got a little knot to weave in later. And single crochet there. So you're going to have these nice big chain five spaces sitting up on top of, directly above, the split shells that you've made from the row before. And that's all you've got to do all the way across. Make sure you chain five skip over the shell, find the space between them, and single crochet. And I'll catch up with you at the end. I love how quick that odd row works up. So once you've worked that all the way across, you'll have a single crochet in between split shells, chain five, bump, jumps over top of the split shell, anchored with another single crochet in between the split shells, all the way across. So you're back to having 24 of these chain 5 spaces. Work the last single crochet between your last two split shells, chain 5, hop over top of that split shell, and anchor it with a single crochet in the top of the chain 3. And that is an odd row. Also, row 3. 
And this is the pattern all the way up now until we get to row nine. So an odd row is a single crochet, chain five, single crochet. For the most part, they're going to be anchored between your split shells. And you're just going to single crochet in the top of the chain three to end an odd row. And you single crochet in place when you turn after an even row. So all of your single crochets for the most part are anchored between your split shells. An even row or a split shell row always begins with a chain three. That counts as a double crochet. It's kind of a post. And then you always flip your work. And every even row, after you flip your work, you just find the first chain five space and work a split shell directly into it. And that is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. You repeat that little motif in every single one of those chain five spaces all the way up to the end. Work a split shell into your last chain five space and you're going to end that row with a double crochet in the top of the last stitch, which is a single crochet from the previous row. And that's all you've got to do to work this stitch all the way to the end. So I'm going to turn you loose. You can work rows uh, finish row four that we're on right now and work all the way up to row nine. It'll be an odd row that you finish on or all of those chain five loops and I'll catch up with you there. At the end of your ninth row, your last row of this pattern, make sure you work the last single crochet between split shells, chain five, and end with a single crochet in the top of that chain three from the turning chain. Then you can snip your yarn Fasten off and weave in your tail. And I would recommend bringing your yarn down through a couple of the loops here and working it back and forth across those stitches and on across row eight there. Once you're done, your entire stitch of soaring split shells should measure approximately 10 centimeters or four inches tall by 40 inches or 100 centimeters wide. And this has quite a bit of stretch, so if you're planning on using this stitch in other projects, remember that the more rows you add, the heavier it gets, and the more you're going to see that beautiful soaring split shell kind of come out. So that's what that looks like. And that is the very simple and elegant soaring split shells pattern. And this blanket is getting quite long. We have one month left to add to our 2018 calendar blanket, and I can hardly believe it's been a whole year already. We want to thank everybody who's been working on this project along with us. And if you're just tuning in for the first time today, don't worry, you still have a whole month to catch up. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed working on the Soaring Split Shells pattern along with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye!